Hey, Enrique, can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you. Okay, how thank you? you. I'm good, how are you? Good. Uh, just before we get started, I just want to let you know uh, that we do record our consultations. It's not a form and everything, but we'd like to give just another reminder before we get started with the consult. Um, but um, I read a little bit of your form. I saw a Husky, mm -hmm. a young Husky, correct? Yeah, is he's a uh, he's a mix. So I did the embark, and he's majority husky, and he, then he's got a a bunch of different. Um, you know, the next one is pit, uh, Pyrenees. Uh, he's got a little lab shepherd and Malumut in him. Oh wow, it's a lot, a lot, yeah, a lot of breeze. Um, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and just fill me in on anything that you the, that is important for me to know about um and goals and everything like that and then i'll be taking notes as i go along um yeah that? no so i i i was with a neighbor at, at the dog park and she has two huskies and she recommended me um huh? yeah um you can adjust and, it for me well jesse just canine perspectives in general nice. um and because uh he's about he's gonna be one years old next month okay um and i was talking to her about just like the pulling and um so she said that she had a really great experience with you guys um so so that's why i kind of uh scheduled the <laughs> consultation of course nice cool um and then what's your dog's name bandit bandit And then um, how much does Bandit weigh? I think right now, because um, we went into the vet for, I think he's about 55 pounds, Sorry. if not a little over that, um, but um, around there. Got it. And then you're looking to work on leash walking skills, correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's in a phase right now where he he pulls I, i'm really small i'm like 92 pounds and he he knows certain paths and i can't tell if he is trying to please me by going towards the past or is excited you know what i mean um but either way he when he gets wind of where we're going he he pulls um and it's almost like a safety hazard with the snow and all this stuff so um it and and he's you know I've tried to intermittently give him treats and like I wouldn't say distract him but just kind of like create like like a little disruption and he's fine and then he wants to go and he he doesn't have a medium speed it's like all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, and like a part of me, a part of me, like really wants him to be free. Like, so I don't want him to be like a robot, you know, like I had hesitations about being a, like, I have the e-color, I have the prong color. I don't think I've used either, mm -hmm. um, but I want to be able to use them as like training tools, but not like long-term tools. Yes. Um, so the way like our training works is you're correct. We don't create robots. All we want for our clients is just to have more control in certain yeah. scenarios, situations, right? So if we're trying to walk to the park, it's a loose leash structured walk. And then once we get to the park, then you can go run around and be a dog, right? Yeah. So um, we'll talk about like what, what the future looks like with these tools and stuff like that. Um, okay. Anything else you're trying to address with Bandit? Um, I mean, he's, he's very good. He's very sweet. He, like he, he digests things. It's at only recently that he's been really good at being like, I don't have to repeat myself that much. He, okay. He's really good. Um, it's only really the leash stuff that that's, I mean, there is, he, he does have, um, he's really 
almost like obsessive a little bit about balls and squeaky balls. And one thing that I've noticed in some of the dog parks is that he gets a little growly mm-hmm. if other dogs come near him. And I get that he's like in his mindset, I think he's thinking, I'm working, don't bother me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and and normally, you know, like the situations have normally it's a growl and they don't escalate. And I I normally just extract myself from that situation. Um, but I don't know if there's any remedy. You think he he gets almost like obsessive compulsive about squeaky balls. Um, and if that's his thing, then that's his thing, you know, and I know how to manage kind of like avoiding uh, escalated situations. Um, but I, I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on how to kind of, sometimes he's super social mode and I'll try to like, I have the ball as kind of a backup and sometimes he's one-on-one. I want to work with mom mode, Mm -hmm. you know, and you never know. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so I do believe that there are like certain like, um, levels of intensity with resource guarding um so it's something yeah. like more in like the like you said it's my ball don't come near it and then i'm just gonna growl and bark or whatever it is right yeah um but then we also have to keep in mind our you know how do, you, do the other dogs take that um you know how they how do they interpret that growl or bark because sometimes dogs do see a challenge and they don't want to back down from that and then that that dog might try to escalate it and then that's where you get the scuffle going on right um yeah so we've we've run into it a little a couple of times i'm in south loop there's it's it's pretty dog friendly um and and a part of me is like i want him to be able to experience it and 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 hear the the response from other dogs like you know chill out um and a part of me is like you know in different settings it's like sometimes you know know your audience you know like it's not well received yes and then we'll talk about that as well how to um because the e-card obviously you don't need to be physically attached to your dog for certain situations so one time Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesse's cl- Jesse's client said that <clears throat> she was her dogs are resource guard as well with balls to other dogs. Yeah, they were at the park, but they separated themselves from like the main yeah. area where the dogs were playing. And there's yeah, fetch and everything, and then um, I think th- her dog was near her. She threw the ball far, and then she sees in the corner of her eye another dog going after that same ball. So now the dogs are going to meet like this, right? Luckily, yeah. she had cholera, so she was able to stop the dog in their tracks in like mid prey drive, mid you know mid 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 prey mode, chasing that ball, and then one eighty and come back to avoid that conflict. So there will be some um, skills and um, ways to use the e collar in those situations to avoid any conflict or any escalations if if bandit does get possessive over something. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, anything else? No, I mean, literally, he's, if when you meet him, he's the sweetest guy. He's, he's really, he's very loving. He's very playful. He's, you know, only, uh, he'll turn a year next month. Um, and he, he's a typical puppy. He doesn't realize his, his way um you know I guess if the only thing is you know sometimes we'll be walking around he'll want to play with other puppies and not get the like the vibe like hey no they're not into it you know but I mean I control that pretty well and he's he's responsive okay um and then what's your what's your um setup right now so like when you're walking with him is he on a flat collar prong collar or harness or gentle leader he's on a harness so the thing is is that like 
initially I had the the leash latched to the top and um and then I changed it to the front and that like helped with some of his things initially um and um but yeah it's really just and I have a prong I have an e-collar I've never really used it um I don't know really appropriately how to use it but I also have been really on the fence about you know whether I wanted to use those tools to train him but I I do think that for him and me to be safe that we do need to like go down that road you know so I have them both we never use them um but typically on his walks we do harness god okay and then what what kind of e-card did you purchase oh my gosh I I have to check it's um it's a newer version of um let me see it's a garmin it's a newer version it's like um a, a very basic version that they i think more recently released okay do you remember how many levels of stimulation it has I don't, but I can check. It it literally has like three buttons where you can vibrate, uh, stimulate, and then a dial cord. And I can check if it would help just to see. Yeah, so the reason why I ask is um, Garmin is a good um, e collar system. However, it's more for like people who whose dog is already trained with it and, and the owner has an understanding of the e-collar. So what I mean by that is dog, um, dog trust systems, um, their levels of stimulation go up to 127 in uh, increments of one. So like one, two, three, four, five, all the way to yeah. one. Garmin, sometimes a lot of the systems go up to eight. Um, don't think that doctor has a hundred more levels their level eight and R127 are equal, right? They feel- this... Oh, it's a different scale. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So okay. sometimes if the dog is really new with e-collar and let's say Bandit doesn't feel <clears throat> four, but then you make a jump to five, right? It might be a big jump and then he yelps and it's too much power, right? Then yeah. you're... he's either not listening to you or, or he's being very vocal on the e-collar, right? So- um... I can tell you the- the the model um sure. if that helps um but i i don't think it goes that far up i mean i i tried it a couple times and then he had really resistance to me he he like you know we'd be crossing the street and he'd like try to you know bite the leash bite me whatever i mean he didn't try to bite me but he tried to bite the leash and pull the leash and you know um, so he had a hard time adapting to, um, but I, I have to be honest, I, I don't know necessarily what I was doing. I was oh, just wait, trying you, to like stimulate him, you know. You used the e-collar already? I used it like once uh, or twice, uh -huh. but I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, no worries. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's the Garmin Delta SE. Carmen. and has a dial for the different levels but then the the different the different um options really are i think stimulate vibrate and toner one. yeah yeah exactly yeah this one has 10 levels now we can try it. Um, does it does it say how many what what um Because the systems are also meant for certain dogs, like heavy dogs or a smaller dog. 
did you do you know what this is meant for how many pounds honestly when i got it it was literally like kind of a newer product and they were like this is like the basics that's the way it was positioned um because the other ones were more like kind of like advanced outdoor yeah yeah all that stuff so I don't I didn't realize any limitation on size okay I'll look into it um the only thing is, since I'm not familiar with the e-car, I'm not sure how, and it's also new, I am not super positive how it goes, right? The brand we use is called Dogtra. That's the brand we've been using for more, Jesse's been using it for more than half his career. And this is the brand that's gotten him the best results. So, um, I mean, like literally if it ends up being that that's the recommended, then there's no problem. I'll, I'll try to get it, you I know? See. Okay. yeah so, so don't don't spend too much time trying to okay. um you know yeah, fit that into sometimes clients are you know they want to try it out and i'll let them know hey we can try it out but if we're if we're in class three and then the econ is still not effective and we're not seeing anything change we've just wasted like three classes no yeah yeah no i get it and i mean i like so my dilemma and all of this stuff as he's been getting older because I got him when he was two months is like a part of me really wants to to be able to be free and like to be able to explore and to be him and he he has a certain um uh he he has a certain pace <laughs> you know like and then the part and the part of me wants to keep him very safe and me safe because we're in well like the weather and so I want to be able to do this to be able to say okay like we're achieving as much as we can um and you're still having fun you're still exploring mom stay safe and um we're all good so that's kind of where we are I see yeah um yeah from our experiences uh, we've never seen a change of personality um, when we're doing econ training. We've never seen uh, new behaviors come out. Like we, we've never seen like a dog who loves humans suddenly hate humans on econ. Um, so we've never seen those shifts in behavior or personality ever. Um, yeah. The only way we would see something is if it's already there, right? So if you know if, if um like for example. Like if he's got any, like for, if we're doing, if we're training a dog who's got dog aggression, right? And we're trying to work with that, right? And we're using e collar, and then we see him react to a dog in a negative way. E collar didn't make that happen. He already had it in him. Yeah. So, like can't create new things. Um, but it also, um, there's a really cool um, video I made on the Instagram with a dog named Panda, and I, I took I I. Uh, I pulled a clip from first lesson of the mom arriving to the lesson because it was me, Panda, and her partner. We were there. She arrives and Panda goes crazy. He's jumping on her. <laughs> he's biting her arm. <laughs> her, right? Uh, he's excited to see her, but it's not translating well, right? Yeah. Second lesson, um, same setup. It's me, her, her partner, and Panda. Um, Pen is laying down. Um, he's not in a command. He just decides to lay down. She arrives and he sees her and her his tail's wagging. And then he sits up and goes next to her and just sits there and just is getting pet by her. Right. Yeah. So he's still excited to see mom. However, it's more of like an appropriate way, right? Like you said, where it's and no one's getting bit, no one's screaming, hey, leave it, sit, sit, right? Yeah. Or like, oh, he's excited to see me in a more uh like with more manners right yeah what we're trying to do is just make life function for you guys and have having more control when needed um throughout your life does it make sense yeah i know totally and that's kind of where what we're trying to achieve here i mean he's he's i i wouldn't change him for the world except that i'm really tiny and 
like a part of me like the other day I was like oh my gosh I wish I could like just buy a wagon and he can pull me in I was like this is like reverse psychology yeah. um, um, he, yeah. I know yeah I understand for um trading tools um we definitely want to switch out that harness um harnesses are meant for pulling right so um okay. sometimes um you know clients think they have more control because it's more of like more um coverage of the body of the dog so they think they can control the dog more but technically um it's sometimes can promote pulling right so huskies okay yeah where, you know the sled dogs where harnesses pull sleds right because they need that opposition reflex are you familiar with that term no opposition reflex is basically when if if you pull back on a dog they want to go against the pressure. Uh, when you pull left, they want to go right. When you pull right, they want to go left. And when you pull forward, sometimes they don't, they don't want to move and they want to go back against the pressure. I definitely, I definitely experienced that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if we're using the e-collar or prong collar, whatever it is, that's telling them to not pull, but then the harness is telling them to go ahead and pull, the dog is getting mixed messages and they can kind of take a it, can it be done to teach these skills with the, our harness and econ? Technically, yes. It's just going to take a longer, and there's not going to be that. It's not going to be super clear for the dog of what to do because he's there. He's getting two 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 messages um, at the same time, right? So, mm -hmm. um, since now we don't we don't train with prong collar, right? All we do is just um, kind of uh what's the word pair it together right so the classes are basically only e-collar if you want prong collar that's an option for you um sometimes it's good an option for like like kind of like yourself who are uh more smaller than the bigger breeds right so if you have like mm -hmm. a rottweiler or a bernard definitely mm -hmm. prong collar but the prong collar is not there for training it's there just in case um for emergencies so like let's say you're walking and then you turn the corner and there's a dog there right and maybe the dog is aggressive and being very barky well you have the immediate physical control to pull mm -hmm. back and you don't need to worry about you know messing around with your remote because sometimes you can be too slow with it and yeah and you have the immediate yeah. physical control rather than the delay right yeah so you can play it by ear sometimes clients will you know We'll do it just in case for those reasons, or sometimes clients like, we'll see if you need it. And then if I want it, I'll, I'll have it on. Uh, so it's kind of like a personal preference with that prong collar. Um, is it overkill to have both tools on the dog? Nope. Um, it's more like the ultimate control there. Um, so don't think it's overkill or anything like that. Um, any questions so far? No, no, I'm, I, it, it makes sense. And Basically, I have those on hand for the different scenarios. It, it, it makes sense, yeah. Um, there are other tools. Out, you know, prong collar um, is a good tool for teaching stuff, like heel, stay, sit, down, come, place. Um, but the con is, is, is um, you know, sometimes dogs might override it. So let's say Bandit knows the path and you're, he, you're already on the path and he's pulling, right? Um, sometimes dogs are not too concerned about the prong collar or how the way it feels, so they still pull through it, right? So sometimes, sometimes we have- He's got the stubbornness in him mm -hmm. to eventually maybe do that. Yes. Um, um, yeah. It, it happens a lot with like our, our bully breeds and power breeds where they just override it. And funny enough, um, Labradors and Golden yeah. Labradors, like, oh. really ignore the prong collar just because they're so happily, they're so happy go lucky, wiggly dog, <laughs> just kind of like, what's going on? They kind of keep doing what they were doing. Right? Yeah. Um, so, from our experience, it has a very low ceiling of uh, like success and getting things done. Yeah. Uh, and it's a lot more nuanced, right? It's about using your, more of your arm and when to apply pressure, when to release and how to hold the leash and things like that. So it, it is technically more technical than e-collar is. E-collar is a lot more, mm -hmm. okay. So, um, which then brings us to e-collar. That's the next tool, which is um, 
why it's our number one or why is our why is why it is our go-to is um it's the only tool that can guarantee 90 to 100 percent of reliable obedience up to off leash it's the only tool that can get you off leash obedience right mm -hmm. um are you familiar so you said you felt it so are you familiar with like the technology behind the e-collars I mean, so I like tried it out a little just to see the sensation. Um, and um, I didn't want to, like I, I told you, I played around with a little bit on the vibrate function only with him um, because the, 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 the other sensation was pretty serious. Yes. And I was totally on the fence about even buying one um in the first place um but i do see it as like uh or a, a safety issue um and a training issue uh, training mechanism um and so i you know that's why i invested because i want him to be happy and safe but you know i mean we're like in south loop there's really nice areas for him to roam about but like it'll be like next to like a major street you know and mm. and that becomes like really nerve-wracking for me i see okay um yeah so i think it depends on again the e-cause for dog trot um it feels like a pulse kind of like a contraction so the technology comes from what's called a tens unit are you familiar with, are you familiar with a tens unit no so a tens unit is used uh, with chiropractors and physical therapists so if you have like a torn muscle uh it's, it's a little like a pad thing that goes on and just contracts the muscles right okay well the same technology that's used on e-collars is also used on humans for physical therapy right even like the same way they work their patients with it is very similar to how we work our dogs with it so the the the, the, the chiropractor would start low and then work their way up on the levels. And then they'll tell the client, let me know when it's too uncomfortable, right? When they get to the point where the client, you know, lets them know, hey, that's uncomfortable. They lower it two levels down and then they let the machine do the rest of the work, right? Very similar to how we do our dog training stuff, okay? Um, so is it electric? Yes, but it's not electricity flowing to the dog's body. Um, it's yeah. not, you know, a literal like electric chair or anything like that. Again, whatever those two contact points are touching is what it's going to contract, right? Um, usually I, you know, I can feel like around like 20, 30s, right? But that's because one, I'm a human. I had no skin or no extra skin <laughs> or no buffer. Right? Yeah. We can feel it pretty quickly um, compared to like a dog with a husky mix. Who that yeah, I think I come to think of it, I think mine has like tone, pulse and stimulate. Those are the three buttons. And then uh, a lever for the level. Yes, uh, Dodge was okay. the same thing. We just don't, we just don't have a beeper. Um, it's just the vibrate pager and then stimulation. And then there's another mode for stimulation, which is called continuous. But we'll talk about that later on. Okay. Um. So um, the brand again is called Dogtra, um, and you know, it's waterproof. Uh, you get the same amount uh, amounts of range with it, so the half mile mile range. Um, it's rechargeable, so you just plug it in the wall when it's dying or it's when it's low. Um, again, it has 127 levels, 127 levels of stimulation, so it gives you a wide range, and we can be very specific to the breed, the scenario, or the situation we're in with Bandit. Um, so we're not mm -hmm. overwhelming him, or we're also not having him just blow off the e collar, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that's the technology, that's the e-collar. Any questions about that so far before I move on? No, I mean, I'd be interested to see, like, once you take a look at the, the, the version we have, you know, just your recommendation on whether we should transition, you know? Yeah. Um, um, again, I'm not sure. I, I am familiar with Garmin. I have seen one of our handlers here uses Garmin uh, for her dog, but it's more of a, an advanced remote system there. Um, so, um, I'll give you the color I recommend for Dotra and I'll let you decide and we can see how okay. that work out. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah. All that information is to be sent to you after the consultation. That's a follow-up email from my assistant, Tina. 
Um, okay. So you a bunch of stuff, right? Um, so then that's the technology of the e-collar. Now it's how do we introduce this tool to Bandit, right? <clears throat> so a lot of times people assume e-collar training is when the dog does a bad behavior and then you raise it really high on the collar and then you just start using it, right? Um, that's incorrect. The dog, you know, is that is that scenario, can that scenario happen in the future? Maybe, but we definitely don't want that to be the first interaction with the e cog from for bandit right so um bandit needs to have an understanding of the e collar first which means he needs to know when it's going to come when it's going to go away and that he is the one in complete control of the e collar right bandit will never know you are the one pressing the button he will only associate with you some certain behaviors because there's nothing physically connecting you yeah feeling on the neck right yeah uh, so that's what, another great thing about it is that it's very uh non-confrontational right because sometimes dogs don't do good with confrontation right yeah either like the cause and effect yeah yeah correct um so a lot of times clients think is my dog gonna hate me because i'm using e-car and i'm like no we've never seen it they don't <laughs> do right um so the first exercise we teach will be the heel command, right? Which is our walking command, right? Um, heel, our version of heel is walk with me, stay with me, and then sit when I stop. So if you take five steps with Bandit, Bandit takes five steps. If you take 10, he takes 10. And then when you come to stop, he's to automatically sit with no words, with his shoulder parallel to your leg in a loose leash in any environment when he's under this command, okay? Um, there's a few reasons why this is taught first. The most obvious reason would be for that structured um, mm -hmm. walking skill. Um, the other reason why we teach this first is again, to teach him how the e collar comes and goes. So um, what is it? When it comes and we give him a clear answer with walking, and then when he complies and walks next to you and it goes away, he's learning, oh, if I just walk to mom, this thing goes away, right? So that's mm -hmm. the answer to turn this off. Usually when dogs first feel e cause, their first response is to get away from the feeling. Yeah. Right? So um, it all depends on how trainers teach e cause. You know, we've gotten some clients um, who did e cause training with other trainers and their dog um, still didn't know how to turn this off. So whenever the dog felt it, the dog would lay down and not move. Oh, Right? Oh, yeah. Mine has never yeah. solved or got that question answered of oh, yeah. what, is this, what is this on my neck, right? So then we kind of had to help him kind of figure that out that you never just stop and freeze, right? Because what if we're trying to recall or something like that, right? And his first reaction was to lay down, don't move, okay? So we had to fix that and stuff like that and, and kind of condition it or recondition it for him. Um, so again, we're just teaching him how the e car feels and what to do in response to that, right? Um, the other reason we teach heel um, is to kind of address his uh, kind of always on go mode, right? When he's always yeah, just yeah, that's him, that's him. So when dogs are like that, you know, physically, yes, you are exercising them, but mentally, nothing's really happening there. Okay, so I already explained kind of like how strict heel is, right? It's very strict so strict that it can be mentally exhausting for dogs, right? So they're also getting mental exercise on your walks. Um, so, and then we're also kind of giving like, because we're giving them a job, right? Dogs need jobs um, in life. So when we come outside and it's more of like a free for all, what's the smell, what's going over in here? And he's kind of like zigzagging, doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. He's not mm -hmm. really like thinking, he's just going, okay? Yeah. So when we start to apply this structured walk for him, it's almost like, oh, this is what I have to do, okay? And it's more tiring for them, right? Uh, and also fulfilling. He's very good if he has a mission. Yes. Like even in play, you know, he's very good at if he has like a, a set thing to do and achieve. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and dogs love that, love those things and they need it um, to in order to just kind of, I guess, remain mentally healthy, right? Because um, a lot of times we deal with overstimulated dogs 
It's the dog who's frustrated when they get outside. They're barking a lot because they're just, they don't know what to do, right? They're just frustrated. So when we do the heel and the e collar stuff, it's more of like a relief, like, oh, I just got to walk next to mom. That's not <laughs> Right. So it's, it's well, not- and and that was just something I wanted to ask about is that he's not necessarily. I mean, we did um, some basic puppy manners training and stuff. I mean, I wouldn't say his walking is like perfect. You know, sometimes he's ahead of me. Um, sometimes he zigzags. Some, a lot of the times he, you know, stops and smells and whatever. Um, so just wanted to kind of like put that out there that, you know, it, there might be a lot to improve in that sense. Um, but I always take it, you know, like when I take him for a walk that it's his time and, you know, I'm kind of, um, letting him do his thing. Yeah. So, um, we won't take that stuff away. All we want is more of a balance, right? So mm-hmm. we have what's called an 80-20 rule. 80% should be structure and discipline, right? Mm-hmm. That's heal for you. 20% can be the, you know, playing with his friends, um, smelling stuff, doing his own thing, right? Because whatever your dog is practicing more of throughout life is who they become. Okay. Mm-hmm. So okay. Like, the same thing with children, right? If you know, yeah. um, if I was raised with no rules and I could skip school and I got, you know, like, like, um, <laughs> no, I, I got, like with no rules, right? I would become, I might become a specific adult, right? Versus raised with rules and consequences and um, very strict parents, you become a more, you, sometimes you can become a more well disciplined adult, right? Same thing for yeah. dogs, right? If they're practicing a lot of do what I want, when I want, it's going to be hard for those moments when you want control because he's going to be thinking, but last the whole week, last week, I got to do whatever I wanted to. Yeah. Now, right. <laughs> like, mom, you yes. let me do that. What happened? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so they are aware <laughs> of these things and how the relationship is between dog and owner. So giving you these tools and exercises like heal, right? Because owners walk the dogs almost like three times a day. So it's a daily activity you can do with bandits. So it gives you a lot of times and opportunities to practice the heel with them uh, in order to improve the relationship and actually apply the structure and the discipline throughout your walks and more boundaries. Like he doesn't know heel. He, uh, you know, he's only learning stay. And I think in retrospect, he, he was, I would say he's, he was a little slow towards connecting with me and, and getting into kind of like our relationship. Um, so he, I, I wouldn't say he's like new to commands. Um, he's, he's really good. Okay. Um, but he, he, he has like, I guess the first thing is kind of a stubborn streak. And then the next thing is um, that he doesn't have like that discipline um on a daily routine like Mm -hmm. he's kind of like you know um you know yeah okay i see um yeah it shouldn't be an issue usually um you know dogs tend to kind of get the stuff pretty fast and easily as long as the owner is obviously doing the homework and stuff like that but Mm e-collar is very almost familiar to dogs because e-collar is physical right it's it's physicality on the neck it's actually doing something physical to the dog right physicality is a dog's language right so if bandit has a ball and there's a dog coming towards him with the ball bandit can't tell the dog leave it or off or no right Mm. Uh, they use physicality so if the dog got close enough and bandit did a snap at the dog the dog yeah. respond like, oh, don't be near this dog with his ball and leave, right? So dogs don't have language. They have physical. So when we're using physicality with a dog whose language is physicality, e-collar, right? Um, they get it quick because it's their language. They understand it, right? Um, so that's like another wonderful thing about e-collar is that since it's touching them, right? Uh, they're able to kind of grasp the concept and the ideas pretty quickly because it's, again, it's their language there. Mm -hmm. Um, Any other questions? 
No, I think this is good to, I mean, like I, I'm, I'm really excited to just kind of like start the journey and getting him acclimated sure. because uh, I think, you know, I was on the fence for a while and, uh -huh. and I got a lot of the, 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 the gear. Um, but I was trying to like a part of me, like very much wants him to be himself and be free. And then a part of me think, you know, was like, you know, this is becoming um, like, it's hard on me um, physically. Um, and so I felt like it was time. Yeah. Cause you know, um, I mean, dogs are animals and when you take an animal and you put them in a crate in the home or you leash them up, all these things are unnatural, right? A dog in a harness, a dog in a car, a dog in a leash, a dog in a crate, um, a dog in a home is all unnatural, right? Dogs are wild animals. They're supposed to be hunting, mating, um, sleeping, napping, running, moving around in like the woods and, and nature, right? So um, we have to learn that, you know, when we get these animals, they have to more so acclimate to our lives because if we acclimate to their lives it's not going to go well right because they <laughs> something that right so uh, you know our yeah. job keep the dog in the home keep everyone happy and you know also safe as well right uh, but cool so um a few quite a few answering the question before you asked earlier which was kind of like how the future will look with e-collar right so yeah um the e-collar in the home is bandit usually like a good dog inside the house um so like he he goes to daycare a couple of days a week uh oh. i work from home and you know depending on like what we did that week or the weather i i try to mix it up so that he has some socialization um so uh in the house He's, he's very good. I mean, he has his space. It, actually, like, he does, he sleeps in his area. I sleep in my area. Um, and he kind of has a certain playtime. Um, but then, otherwise, he's, he's pretty, like, I don't worry about that. Perfect. So cool. Yeah. So, what I was trying to get at is, if he's in the home, he doesn't need to wear the e-collar. If you're going on a walk, even after you complete your program, the e should always be on. Okay. okay. So it's not so much of like you're using it all the time, but more like if something were to happen, like maybe you yeah. walk, maybe you're walking on a prong collar and then maybe your prong collar falls apart because sometimes the prongs might not be on correctly. And then he takes off. Well, we were prepared for this day and we have our e-collar to make him do the 180 and come back to you, right? Yeah. Um, or maybe the prong collar is set up correctly, your whole setup is, is good, but then maybe um a car backfires all of a sudden. So it surprises you and bandit. You know, yeah. we've, we've heard a lot of stories where the dog will just bolt and owners get pulled to the ground, leashes slip out the hand, leashes break, and then the dog just takes off and they're in what's called flight mode. Okay, when dogs in flight mode, they're thinking kill or be killed. They're running for their life. So bandit come might not work, right? So you have your e -call. No, and that's the other thing. His recall's not like, you know. Um, yeah. So you have the e car in order to kind of follow through with the command and make him return to you. Because um, now he's going to be more concerned about the e car, not the car back fine, right? Yeah. So it's more of like, in case you have that on, right? So my dog's. Mm -hmm um she's one of them she's four and i started e college training when she was four months five months old right so to this day i still have the e car on but i maybe like press a button like twice three times a month here and oh there, wow right? wow so yeah. you know in the beginning you're going to use it a lot we want you to use it a lot so that in the future you don't need to use it okay yeah and so, and that 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 was kind of like where I was on the fence fence like I got it and then I was like okay like I I kind of was in a phase where I was coaching myself I was like this is only for training and this is not for a long term, um, yeah. <laughs> you and know. Can dogs function without the e-collar throughout life? 
Some of them can, right? So let's say one day you don't have the e-collar on, but then Ben decides to pull you, okay? Now, it has nothing to do with the training. It has nothing to do with you, right? That's just nature. So what that is called is called opportunistic behavior. Um, an example we like to use for humans is, do you drive on the highway? Not really. I, I work from home. I don't really... I but like I have I have, <laughs> have. Do, you, do you go the speed limit I do. <laughs> no well what happens when you see a squad car <laughs> yeah totally so it's more yeah. of like just likes to call a collar a cop on a collar right yeah. and when the cop's present Ben it will be almost like oh just gotta wash myself right mm -hmm. um, then when the cop is not there he's like oh what can I get away with right Again, some dogs are able to still function without the e-collar on. They're still good. But then other dogs immediately, immediately know the difference on this walk, this particular walk. There's no e-collar. And they'll still go back to their old ways or try to see what they can get away with. Um, so like, I, I spoke to people in our building that's like, they were saying that's like, when they their owner doesn't go out with them with their like treat bag they know that they can act up yeah because it's just yeah. any tool really yeah. if, if you don't have food you know if the dog only comes back with food on recall and you don't have your food this time now what happens right but with food that's more riskier because dogs can gamble right so the dog bandit can be for example out playing with his friends and then you're like bandit and then you're waving your turkey right and he's like hmm i already got fed today i might get the turkey later anyways but my dog friends i will not see them later so i'm probably gonna choose my dog friends right so if the dog blows off the food now you're really stuck what's gonna now what's gonna work here right mm -hmm. versus e-collar it's almost like guaranteed response because you're already touching him from afar and you're giving like almost like an imagine, like a, a wireless, that sounds funny, like a leash tug or leash pull. Mm -hmm. you. So you yeah. have to go with that attention. Yeah. Um, but that was good. Like, yeah, food technically is, would be like, a, if you don't have it, is a dog still going to listen, right? Um, any questions so far? No, I mean, it, it, it all sounds good. I'm really excited to kind of, um, you know, you, you'll, you can take a look at that, uh, the, the Garmin product I mentioned, tell me if it, it's something that you guys would work with or recommend the one that you suggest. Um, but, um, I, I think this is, it's, it's kind of the time to be able to, um, to get them safe. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause usually around six months to a year. Like clients will be like, fine, we'll get the dog trained because now they're getting bigger. And now they're trying. Exactly. Know, I'm finding the dogs are finding who they are and, you know, personality wise and stuff like that. But no, this is all, this is all nothing out of the ordinary. It's all normal stuff. Um, just an over excited puppy just needing some more rules and guidance. That's all. Um, any other questions about the e-collar or anything like that before we move on to programs? No, I mean, the one thing is, you know, like before we go into programs is that he, he's, he's such a love bug. So oh. he'll be excited to like a new person in his life mm -hmm. and he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll be more excited about that than what we're going to be doing. So, I, you know, maybe that's a segue, but um, we'll, we'll have to kind of manage that part too. Yeah, right now I have a client. Um, her name is Lainey, the dog. And whenever she sees someone, she's like, when the person is like, if she knows the person's walking to her, like from a, a long distance, the tails are already wagging. She's already yeah. excited. So um, definitely, um, we definitely kind of have more control with that. So it's more like you can still love on the person, but not in like an obsessive, like. Yeah, like, or like not like. <laughs> separate the play from kind of what we're trying to achieve right yes exactly okay um well cool so program wise um you know we have in person 
we have board and train or daycare train. Is there a specific program you were you were looking at or thinking about, or did you want me to explain how all the programs work? Or um, so I haven't looked into all the different ones, but okay. like if you could like quickly kind of give me pros and cons of both all of them. Um, you know I. And 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 like I'd appreciate your candid like you know uh, opinion about like what's most like you know successful. Um, but my my one withdraw is that like in person he'll he'll think it because he does you know daycare. I I just don't want him to think it's like a play session you know so. No, I wouldn't worry about that. That that okay. I wouldn't. That's that's not um. We can we can, we'll address that class one and that'll be that'll be one of the easier things there. Okay. Um. So though, so out of the three in person, born train, daycare and train, um, the one that I see most effective is always going to be in person, because yeah. it's all verbal instruction. I don't touch the dog or the trainer. Right, the trainer never touch the dog unless they need to. So the training is all connected to you from the start. Okay, uh, so it's verbal instruction. Uh, we have, we meet an hour once a week, however many times, depending on the program. So from everything I've gathered, um, there's a three-week program, six, nine, and 12, okay? The three-week program is more for owners who just want the walk. That's it, just a good walk. So they don't really care about recall, or uh, you know, stationary commands like stay or place. Place is the command that's like go to your bed, sit, stand, lay down, chew the bone. I don't care what you do, just don't hop up the bed, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a walk. Okay. The six week program is you get the structured walk. We cover recall, right? And then we also go over like one stationary command that you can use in the home or outside. Okay. The nine week program are is for clients who want to take their dogs to patios and need their dog to lay down and not move for an hour and a half or something like that right so it's it's more control obviously mm -hmm. more, you know the, the more classes you do the more control you're going to have right the 12 week program is everything right you get complete off leash training um it's more for like clients who want their dogs off leash every other weekend so maybe they go hiking Every other weekend, they need the ultimate control, right? Uh, from everything I'm gathered here, it sounds like minimum, it's either going to be a three week or a six week. Okay, six week it's, also yeah. gives us more. Uh, I think it's in between there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, again, if you're just trying to get the walk done and that's it, bare bones, that's it, three week. If you want more recall and like a stationary control and more wiggle room, throughout your program and time, the six week is also would be a good program for you. The nine and yeah. 12 are there for, you know, if, if you think about it and you're like, wow, well, I really want all control, then those options are there for you. But six or three is what I'm feeling here if you're just trying to get that pulling done. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm leaning towards the six. I mean, the thing is also is that, um, I'll probably be moving in a couple months and I, I want to be able to have him more off leash mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we're in our new location. Um, so he can enjoy it more. Um, so I, I mean, like, you know, in Chicago, that six weeks sounds good, but maybe I'd like to prep him for what's to come and, and, and like living more, life off leash um so there's that little gray area yes okay um so yeah then if, if you're wanting a little bit more maybe nine a week or six week okay yeah uh, but okay. You, can always, you can always add more later so maybe you get a six week okay and you're happy with that right or maybe you're like i'm happy with this but he's learned so much and i think he can learn more and i want to learn more too that then you can buy what's called another three week program, right? Instead of like another six week or anything like that. Okay, so we can decide as we go. Yes. Okay. Um, what else? So that's how the program works. An hour once a week, we give you one topic at a time to practice for that week. Pros and cons for in person. Pros, you do it yourself, so it's all related to you. Um, cons, it just takes a little longer. 
right? So what we can get done in six weeks for in-person, we can get done in two weeks for a board and train, okay? So board and trains, we get it done faster. Um, minimum one week or two weeks. So each week you get an hour long video. Um, in these videos, the trainer will be, uh, the trainer who handles the board and trains and daycare and trains, his name is Elias. In the video, Elias will be teaching he'll stay, sit down, come place, right, in the video. So you're seeing the first moments of how Bandit is reacting to the e-collar and how he learns throughout the whole like video and stuff like that. Once Elias teaches a command, now it gives a chance for all the other handlers and the other trainers, right, who know how to use the e-collar to just reinforce and practice, right? Mm -hmm. teaching, teaching stuff with the e-collar and just repeating uh, already a learned behavior on the e-collar are very different, right? So once Elias teaches it, repeating it is easy and the dogs get the repetition, right? Um, with the board and, train, board and train program, you also get follow-up lessons. So you still get that in-person time. With the two-week board and train, you get four hours of in-person. I think with the one week, you get two hours. I think it's two. Um, during no, I, 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 I can't do it myself. Like the, the second option is much more appealing. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I'm a, a first time dog owner. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't rely on myself, to be honest. But for, for e-collar stuff, it's more, it's going to be stupid simple, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, it's, it's very. It's just repetition, right? Yes. I mean, it's, not to dumb it down, but. Yeah. It's just repetition. And, you know, once you get a feel for it, you're like, oh, this is all I got to do. Right. So this it's you know, a lot of other trainers are very um, specific timing. Um, and they have a lot of information. Like I saw this one trainer make a post on Instagram. Uh, he made like a little diagram with the circle charts and everything like that. And <laughs> all these rules. I'm just like, Dude, you are making <laughs> because we have to think like we're training you guys as dog owners, right? You're not a dog trainer. So we're not going to use dog trainer language for you. We're going to use dog owner language and make it just making the dog just function in your life and make life uh, more pleasant. That's all our job is. You don't need to learn about timing and clickers and and um, anything else that's too advanced, right? Because all you want is just a nice walk and just more control. That's all, right? Yeah. Um, so pros and cons for a board and train. Pros, again, we get it done faster. Cons, it's not connected to you. And then you're also missing out on just the experience and because we don't record everything. So like if we're taking them on a training walk, right? We don't film those. So if something happens, maybe we're like, he sees a dog and he, he, he lunges and wants to say hi. And we have to work him through that. Or maybe across the street when the dogs are out in their yards and they're barking and how do we handle that? You don't get to see how that works out. No, I, I appreciate you guys kind of covering the, that part. I mean, for me, if, I, I wouldn't say I'm like, you know, dire, but I think what gets him starting to think about it earliest, um, I will do my best to try to emulate, you know, what, you know, when we're on our one-on-ones. Um, but I'm thinking that the pros outweigh the cons in that scenario, um, just because, um, and, and he's funny. I mean, but anyways, I, I, I'm thinking that, you know, regardless of different things that may happen, um, I, I think that getting him mentally, you know, connected to that and emotionally connected to it um, is the, is the best way to start. Sure. Yeah um while he's here for board and training for the board and train program um he'll also be able to socialize with the dogs so he'll be playing with okay them. um and then he'll also be learning how to walk on a tri-melt so that's like another thing if it's too cold, okay if it's too cold, <laughs> like a walk or anything like that uh our dogs do treadmill here for another for additional exercise um <laughs> and then 
for sleeping. How many days would that be? So Three. you can either do the one week program or two week. Okay. The one week is more for like, if you're going to do just having a foundation set up and then you continue the rest. So sometimes a one week, it, I, the two week program tends to, is like the best recommended, right? Because okay. that second week, the dog really opens up to everyone and everything else. And they can kind of get more comfortable and just give us more practice to work with the dogs. Um, we have a three week program as well with three week program, you get three hour, one hour long videos. So the first video with any program is the, um, the first moments he's learning all six commands. The second video, if you do a second week, um, is transitioning the commands to a 30 foot long leash. Okay. The third video, if you're doing a third. Enrique, I'm so sorry. I think we're almost at the, our time. So I just wanted to mention that to you. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm you good, okay? I'm good to go. Okay. No, are. I'm good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, okay. The three week program is for when you when get a third video, what we do is we put Bandit on a long leash in a playpen full of dogs playing, and we're teaching you how to work his obedience with these type of distractions. The fourth week, if you do a four-week board and train, we take Bandit to a park. Um, sometimes, depending on how the dog's doing, we do touch upon off-leash stuff, uh, but we're just kind of just taking to the park just to teach you how the obedience applies to real-life scenarios and uh, just like in, in different environments and how it kind of functions throughout a walk, right? Yeah. So those are one week, two week, three week, four week. Again, minimum from what I'm hearing and what I'm getting, the two week program is yeah. Uh, the one week is good too. It's just not enough time to kind of really solidify. Come no, in. I mean you're right. I mean I'm even thinking like of the benefits of like even longer. So yeah. I, I mean part of me is like gonna miss him so much. By I, I think I'm I don't know. I'm thinking like even a week more. I, I don't know and uh, more yeah, I, I don't um, so yeah it'd be interesting if you send me that information because um I think he's almost at the year mark and I feel like it's good to be able to prep him and change kind of his his status quo what he's used to um it it might be nice to kind of quote unquote give him a boot camp sure. away from us and the normal habits um and um yeah i you know like one thing is that i like cook him his food is that as a thing or would yes. that be a, something we could talk through so for feeding stuff um we accept raw food we accept you know um you know, if maybe if you need the food to be refrigerated and then every meal you want microwaved or something like that, we can do that as well. Okay. Um, I think we have one client who um, uh, makes the food like raw before and then the dog had to stay for like a long time and then she kind of kept delivering us food as the dog was here. So okay. Um, do we cook food? I don't think we cook food, but we can like, if it's like pre pre-packaged and everything like that, I'm pretty sure we can like figure a way out. But we do have refrigerators and freezers and stuff like that. Um, okay, okay, um, okay, great. Yeah, no, he had uh, of course like a lot of tummy issues as a puppy. I see. And I just started cooking things, and it ended up better. So okay. Um, again for sleeping. Um. We don't have, ken we have kennels here, like, like a little, like crates, like the actual crates, but we also have the kennel runs. So like the, the ones that like stalls, right? The long, okay. um, it's heated floors. So he's, they'll be warm throughout the night as well. Um, is he, is he crate trained, kennel trained? Um, he, he, he's like, so he does crate in his daycare. He, okay. he doesn't sleep in his crate at home. But he has no problem, you know, like at uh, his daycare, like just settling in by himself. Perfect. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, what else? 
I guess another a heads up would be, you know, sometimes clients think the board and train is similar to like a, uh, like, you know, if your car needs an oil. I'm going sh- to show him. He's sleeping, but. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> oh, is he all white? He's all yeah, white. he's got a little ginger line in his back. Um, but he's. <laughs> Just taking a nap. He's he's passed out. <laughs> um, but um, you know, sometimes clients think, uh, like you know, I send my dog to a, uh, a boring train. They're gonna come back like a new car, right? Um, that's not how it works, right? There's gonna be follow up to do. There's gonna be homework to follow through. Yeah. Um, those follow up lessons are very important so that we make sure everything is transferring you. Everything is transferring over to you appropriately and correctly, right? Yeah. So this is another heads up with the boarding train stuff like that. Um, what else? You are more than welcome to come visit him if you want. You know that's always fine. Um, does it ruin the program? It doesn't. Can it stress the dog out a little bit? Yeah, because you come and go, and they're kind of like, oh, mom's here, and they get excited, and they, they do get a little stressed before, after you leave, but then they kind of go back to like, I'm here. Uh, so it's kind of like a personal preference if you want to visit him or not. That's up to you. Um, but uh, he's he's a little like uh, like when we change over to his boarding place over here. Like I I let him feel it out a little bit. I don't know if there's the opportunity for him to just kind of like sniff out the facilities before we. <laughs> so if if you're interested in that, you can bring him um, for an evaluation process. It's a three day evaluation okay. process. So it's three days for like, it's a reduced price because it's an eval, right? Then like a regular day of daycare. Um, and he can kind of visit for his three days or two days and maybe the third day it's his starting of his boarding, whatever. Um, and he, he can kind of get a feel for it. So it's not just like a, all of a sudden you drop them off and then you leave. Yeah. Yeah. So that is I think I'd be interested in that just because he, I mean, he's never been in a situation where he was like not into it. He's pretty social with both humans and dogs, but um, just to ease him in, you yeah. know. Uh, okay. Cool. And then, um, so three day evaluation. Um, any other questions? No, I think um, I it would be great. I, I think the boarding and training option is is really a good like fit for him. Um, and if you can send me over like, you know, I think we talked, I, I think it's more fitting the three to five, you know, the longer based on his needs, um, those different options and then the three day evaluation um i think those really meet what what not necessarily only what i'm trying to achieve but like i think they'll be good for him yeah okay um so you're interested so there's one two three four you're interested in a three or four week board and training program you said oh so because i can two to to four i guess if you could give me the information to two to four Two to four. Um, just like what's covered, costs, like, you know, all that stuff. And then the three-day evaluation ahead of it. Um, I think that'd be perfect. Sweet. Um, so you'll receive a follow-up email from the kennel manager, Katie. Um, okay. She's going to send you the e card that I recommended, uh, the program I recommended with the prices, and then a link to Ginger. Ginger is our website we use for having dogs um, information like you know uh, uh, vaccinations pictures profiles contact information so she'll send you a link to ginger to fill out and kind of get all the information in there um, vaccinations are needed and then also a fecal exam that says negative within the last okay within the last year i think it is so once all, not, okay so once all that information is filled out and turned in we can go ahead and begin the billing and booking process for the eve okay. in the boring train if you want. Um, and then um, other than that, that is pretty much it for that follow-up email that Katie will be sending to you. Any questions about that? Um, no, I, I think 
I think we're good. I, it it sounds uh there was one thing I no, I, I think we're good. I'll look forward to receiving it. Okay. Um if anything does come up, any more questions, feel free to email me. You have my email. Okay. Um, and then I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, um just keep a lookout for that email. Thanks. I, I know we went a little over, but I'm really excited for you guys to meet Bandit. Um, <laughs> well. um, and thank you for talking through kind of some of my concerns, but also hopes for him. Yes. Um, so we'll go from there. Okie dokie. All right. It was nice okay. to with you. Um, Tina, correct? Your name's Tina as well? Christina. I'm Christina. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, but okay. It was very nice speaking with Christina and um, let us know if you need anything else. Okay, have a good night. You as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Hello.